There are different classes of blood vessels, and they differ considerably based on structure and function. Arteries are the vessels where blood travels away from the heart, starting from the aorta, then branch and get smaller until they reach the organs and tissue beds where these vessels become arterioles. Arterioles control the blood as it is delivered to capillary beds. Capillaries are the only place that diffusion of nutrients and waste take place. Venules are small veins that drain the capillary beds, carrying away waste and other exchanged molecules from the cells and tissues. Venules collect into larger and larger veins, returning blood to the right atrium. Veins are where blood travel toward the heart. The largest veins are the superior and inferior vena cava. The general structure of blood vessels are the same, with the exception of capillaries. Blood vessels have three layers called tunics, where capillaries only have one. The three layers are the tunica intima, tunica media, and the tunica externa. The tunica intima is the innermost layer. It is more commonly known as the endothelium. This layer is a single layer of cells that are very dynamic. The endothelium is a smooth lining that is in contact with the blood and controls the tunica media. The endotheliums interface with the components of the blood, like free radicals, cholesterol, clotting factors, etc., and flow, like sheer force along the vessel wall, can actually affect whether that vessel dilates or constricts. This is called autoregulation. The tunica media is the middle layer made of smooth muscle. This layer plays a significant role in blood pressure. Constriction of the tunica media increases blood pressure, while dilation decreases blood pressure. The analogy is water coming out of a hose. If you put your thumb over the end, therefore decreasing the size of the outlet, the pressure and spray increases. The tunica externa, or tunica adventitia, is the outermost layer made primarily of elastin or collagen connected tissue. The collagen creates structural integrity, while the elastin allows for distensibility. Capillaries only have the endothelium, or tunica intima. This means that at no point is the blood without contact with the endothelium. Arteries and arterioles all have three, all three layers, but as soon as the blood enters a capillary bed where diffusion can take place, there is only an endothelium. This means there is only a single cell layer wrapping around or defining that vessel. This allows for diffusion to easily take place. Arteries are high pressure vessels and therefore are thicker when compared to veins. The blood in arteries travel away from the heart and is almost always oxygenated blood. The exception is the pulmonary trunk arteries. The types of arteries vary as they get closer to the smaller arterioles. Elastic arteries are considered to be conducting arteries. The elastic arteries are the very large vessels like the pulmonary trunk and aorta. The closer to the heart, the more elastin it contains, which allows these proximal vessels to handle the pulsatile flow as it is ejected from the heart. The purpose of the distensibility of these vessels with the high elastin content is to maintain steady flow between beats. When the heart has ejected blood, the elastic arteries expand due to the volume and force of blood coming from the heart. Between beats, these large vessels recoil, maintaining forward flow. Muscular arteries are also called distribution arteries because they branch off to different organs of the body. They have a proportionally greater amount of smooth muscle in their tunica media when compared to diameter. Due to their musculature that can dramatically affect their diameter, it is this class of arteries that play a role in blood pressure. The musculature of the tunica media allows constriction to increase blood pressure and dilation to decrease blood pressure. Arterioles are, are smaller arteries bringing blood to the capillary beds. Pressure drops considerably in the arterioles in order to prevent damage to the delicate capillary beds. In addition to a significant pressure drop, the pressure in the blood is now steady and no longer pulsatile. The larger arterioles are similar to the muscular arteries and therefore are also determinants of blood pressure. The cardiovascular and respiratory systems are designed to get oxygenated blood to the capillary beds where the body or tissues can get what they want out of it and then take away the waste. The capillaries are where nutrients and waste are exchanged. There is only one cell layer making up the capillary vessel. 
This allows the oxygen in the blood to easily diffuse out of the capillary to the cells that need it. Also, any waste created by the cells, in addition to carbon dioxide, can leave the cell and easily enter the capillary to be taken away. The walls of the capillaries are continuous with little gaps between endothelial cells to prevent larger molecules like red blood cells to escape. Most capillaries are continuous. However, there are a few specialized regions that have fenestrated capillaries. Fenestrated capillaries allow a few small proteins to leave the blood and go into the specialized tissue areas, such as the filtering region of the kidney, the glomerulus, areas of absorption in the intestines, and some endocrine glands. Sinusoidal capillaries have the largest gaps in them to allow large molecules to escape. These are found in the liver, bone marrow, and lymph nodes. Capillary beds are a web-like network of vessels in a particular tissue region or organ. There are muscles that go around the vessel prior to the blood entering the capillary bed where we can divert blood flow called pre-capillary sphincters. Pre-capillary sphincters help to conserve blood because we do not have enough blood to fully serve all of our body parts simultaneously. An example would be if you were to go for a run, blood flow to the intestines would be reduced to allow more blood to serve the working muscles. These pre-capillary sphincters allow us to increase or decrease flow to specific capillary beds depending on the dynamic needs of the body. Collateral arteries are an extra arterial serving a capillary bed. Intense aerobic conditioning can increase collateral development in the heart. This would prevent myocardial damage in the event of a coronary blockage, which would normally result in a heart attack causing heart muscle to die. The myocardium would survive because the collateral arterial would continue to deliver oxygen. Anastomoses are direct connections either between arteries joining to feed a capillary bed or between an artery and a vein bypassing a capillary bed. The nutrient molecular Ion exchange in a capillary bed relies on three mechanisms. Diffusion is a passive exchange of ions and molecules, etc. It does not require energy because it goes from high concentration to low concentration. Filtration is also considered to be passive. Pressure within the vessels, called hydrostatic pressure, literally pushes fluid out. Reabsorption is when substances are brought back into the capillary via osmosis. So not only do you have substances leaving the capillary through diffusion and filtration, but we also bring substances back in again through reabsorption. Anything that does not get reabsorbed gets taken away by the lymphatic system. There are different sizes of veins. A small vein is called a venule, and then there are medium veins. Blood leaving the capillary beds drain into small venules. This blood contains carbon dioxide and cell waste. Venules and the increasingly larger veins function to return blood back to the heart. All veins except the pulmonary veins carry deoxygenated blood. Venules have very little smooth muscle, or tunica media, and they have a very flimsy feel compared to arterioles as they do not need to accommodate very high pressures, usually pressures less than 20 millimeters of mercury. Although veins have less tunica media, they can still constrict and dilate, which play a significant role in blood volume regulation. These vessels are where most of the blood volume is located, considered to be capacitance vessels. When they constrict, even slightly, a large volume of blood can be sent back to the heart to increase output. There are many pharmacological agents that affect venous capacitance. Because veins have such low pressures, they have valves inside to prevent backflow. These valves are flaps of tunica intima. These flaps easily move aside when the blood is moving forward. In the event a person stands up, the blood in the veins of the leg on the way back to the heart will succumb to the effects of gravity. To prevent the blood from falling down and pooling in the lower leg, the valve flaps capture the blood. Blood is therefore prevented from going backwards. The moment the muscles around the area squeeze, the blood will go forward toward the heart. It functions like an open tube of toothpaste. When squeezed, blood can only go one way, toward the heart. This is the effect of the muscle pump. A person that must stand for long periods of time would benefit from intermittent contraction of leg muscles to aid the return of blood to the heart and minimize any impediment of flow. Varicose veins are veins that are stretched out so the valves no longer meet together. 
which allows blood to reverse and pool in the legs. It is seen as distended veins and can be prevented by support hose that compress the veins, bringing the valves together.